My question for you today is this. In this very busy week before Christmas 2017, are you resting in His love? wonderful time of the year this is. In December, our thoughts and, and activities and everything has to do with the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ, the time we celebrate at Christmas. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting love. On that early morning in Bethlehem, the shepherds were watching over their flock, something they did every day, just a normal, usual occurrence. And suddenly, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be the sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly... There was with that one angel a multitude of the heavenly host, and they were praising God, and they were saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. And the Son of love, the Son of God, was born. Love is all Jesus had ever known. Because, you see, he was the beloved son of God the Father, who is love. Even the angels were singing peace on earth because they understood Jesus was coming to this earth to bring joy and peace forevermore. As Jesus grew up, he loved. As Jesus entered his ministry, he loved. The love of God is so deep so wide, so high, that the Word tells us that Christ may dwell in your heart through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and the length and the depth and the height, to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. That is the Jesus I want to talk to you about today. Romans 2, 4 says, The goodness of the Lord brings us to repentance. Not the badness, not the hardness, the goodness of the Lord. We come to the Lord Jesus Christ through the goodness that leads us to repentance. He doesn't berate us. He doesn't scold us. He doesn't tell us we should have. He doesn't tell us we could have. We shouldn't have. Jesus leads us by his grace and his gentle Holy Spirit into a relationship with God, our Heavenly Father. We can really rest in the love of our God. When you know you are loved, you rest. When you know you are loved, you trust. When you know you are loved, you have faith. When you know you are loved, you love in return. We can rest in the love of God. Over and over again, we are told in his word, do not fear. Just like that angel said to those shepherds, do not be afraid, do not fear. But there is one place we're told to be of fear, to have fear. Let us therefore fear, 
lest a promise being left of us entering into his rest. Any of you should seem to come short of it. Jesus didn't come preaching at people. He never had harsh words for senders. He never had harsh words for those who loved him. His only harsh words and hard words were directed at the religious people, the ones who thought they were so great, and they kept the law. I believe Jesus was a smiling, joyful man. I believe that that's why little children would run up to him. They wanted to be with him, and they don't do that with a sourpuss. He went home to eat with sinners. <laughs> And that set the religious people on fire. They couldn't stand it because of the company he kept and where he went to eat. One day, Jesus was walk walking along the street in a throng of people. And suddenly, he looked up in a tree, and there was a little guy up in the tree because this guy had been hearing about this man. And he climbed up there he, so he could see this man, Jesus Christ, whom he'd been hearing about. This was a sinful man. He was a tax collector. Everybody hated him practically. And he was collecting taxes possibly for another nation even. So he was not loved at all. But Jesus looked up and told him to come down. And when he came down, Jesus said, I'm going to go home with you. And Zach came down immediately, much to the complaint of the religious ones around because of his his reputation. Then Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, I give half of my goods to the poor, and if I've taken anything from anyone by false accusation, I'm going to restore fourfold. And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to your house, because he is also a son of Abraham. Jesus hadn't preached to him. Jesus hadn't scolded him for taking too much money. Jesus just looked at him and said, Zacchaeus, I want to go home with you. And the man starts emptying his pockets. The goodness of the Lord. Zac was going to give half of his goods to the poor. And if he had wronged anyone, he was going to repay them fourfold. All because of Jesus loved him, all because the goodness of the Lord that led to repentance. One of my favorite stories in the Word of God was when Jesus had a very important meeting, and it took him out of his way to where he was going. The person with whom, with whom he had the appointment didn't forget about it. She just never knew that she had an appointment. So she comes to the well in the middle of the day because she doesn't want other women there taunting her or making remarks of any kind or looking at her kind of funny because of her reputation. So she would come alone in the middle of the day. And this time she comes and there sits a man that she has never seen. And he starts out by saying, hey, will you give me a glass of water? Will you give me something to drink? Just as simply simple and friendly is that. And she is amazed because it is evident that he is a Jew and she is a Samaritan and the Samaritans are hated by the Jews. And But she's not only a Samaritan, she's a woman of all things. And Jesus just sat there in conversation with this woman talking about water. And during that conversation, he said, well, you know what? Said, I'm the living water. And if you drink of this water out of this well, you will never thirst again. And during that conversation with his unnamed woman, Jesus, for the first time, tells her he's the Messiah. What love, what grace, what goodness. Oh, and by the way, he says, well, go get your husband. And she said, I don't have a husband. And he said, that's right, you don't. You've had five husbands, and the man with whom you're living is no longer, is not your husband. With no accusation whatsoever, with no condemnation, 
he told her the truth and she perceived he was a prophet. And they started talking about worship. From a cup of water to just in a matter of minutes to worship because of the goodness of Jesus and the compassion and the love. The woman then left her water pot and ran into the city to tell the men of the city, come see a man which told me all things that I ever did. Is not this the Christ? Imagine this, a woman with that reputation, and she runs into town and tells the men, come see a man I found. You can imagine how at first that startled them. Or They said, well, what else? What's new? But as she talked, there was something in the way she talked. There was something in the way she acted that they knew there was something different, and they all went out of the city to see Jesus. And what a meeting that turned out to be. Many of the Samaritans of that city that day believed in him for the saying of the woman which testified, he told me all that I ever did. So when the Samaritans were come in unto him, they besought him that he would tarry with them, and he stayed two days. And many more believed by his own word. And they said to the woman, Now we believe, not because of anything you've said, but we've heard him for ourselves. And we know that this is indeed the Christ, the Savior of the world. Now after two days he departed, and he went into Galilee. Many came into a relationship with Jesus Christ during those days, all beside because the goodness of the Lord meeting that woman at the well and bringing her to salvation. Another time there was a woman caught in adultery. Isn't it amazing that only the woman was caught? I think it takes two to commit adultery. The religious ones did the right thing, though, they were going to take this woman and they were going to throw stones at her and they were going to kill her because she had committed adultery. But they decided they were going to test Jesus and they brought her to him first just to see what he would do. And I'm sure when Jesus looked at her, he looked at her with compassion. And I'm sure she felt to the depths of her spirit and her soul, the compassion and the love that was coming out of him. And Jesus stooped and wrote something in the sand. And what he wrote, could it have been the name of the man involved? Whatever it was, it must have taken their attention. But they kept demanding an answer. So Jesus stood up again and he said, all right, we can stone her. But let the first one who has no sin be the first one to stone. And he stooped down and started writing in the dust again. When the accusers heard this, they slipped away one by one, beginning with the oldest, until Jesus was the only one left in the middle of the crowd with the woman. Then Jesus stood up again and he said to the woman, where are your accusers? Do you have any? And she said, no, Lord. And Jesus said, neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. You see, the only one present that day in that group that have, could have stoned her because he was without sin was Jesus the Christ. And he chose not to, still, to kill her. Once again, the goodness of the Lord led to repentance. There was no berating the woman. There was no fussing at her. There was no telling her, you must not do this again. Who do you think you are? What do you think you did? None of that. It was just his gentle love and compassion pouring out to this woman. There was a song we used to sing, such a beautiful song. His love has no limit. His grace has no measure. His power has no boundary known unto men. For out of his infinite riches in Jesus, he giveth and he giveth and he giveth again. 
you can rest in the love of God. No matter what your situation is about today, no matter, you can rest in him in the middle of it all. The goodness of the Lord leads to, leads to repentance, and repentance leads to salvation. The New Testament Greek word for salvation is sozo. It means I'm saved, I'm healed, I'm delivered, I'm prospered to do well, I'm preserved, I'm protected, I'm made whole. One night after the resurrection of Jesus, the disciples decided they were going fishing. This is what they'd done all their life before they met Jesus, and this was the one thing they knew how to do. They knew how to catch fish. However, they fished all night and didn't catch one thing. And then they heard a voice calling from the beach, Children, have you any food? And they answered, no, they did not. And Jesus said, put your net out on the other side of the boat. And when they put the net out on the other side of the boat, the net became so full of fish, they couldn't even haul it back into the boat. They had to drag it all the way to shore. Their need was abundantly supplied. And when they got to shore, there was Jesus cooking breakfast for them. The last time Peter had been by a campfire was when he had vehemently denied he knew Jesus. He never knew that man, and he even cursed while he said it. There's nothing worse you can do than curse and vehemently deny Jesus Christ. But there Jesus is cooking breakfast, and he's not even, not even, although, excuse me, he's not just cooking breakfast for them, but he's making a new memory for Peter. How beautiful and how wonderful. And then three times Jesus asked Peter to feed his sheep and his lambs. You cannot do anything worse than this, but the goodness of love the graciousness of love, the wonderful Jesus that we know and we experience in our hearts and lives. He had no condemnation for Peter. He didn't tell him off. He didn't say, Peter, you have no part of me. Never, ever did he in any way brush Peter off, but he restored Peter to the point that on that great day, many days later, several days later, Peter stood up on the day of Pentecost and 3,000 people came to Jesus because of the message that Peter delivered that day. The goodness of the Lord once again turned that whole situation into one of victory, not one of a lifetime of regret and condemnation. If you hear nothing today but Jesus loves you, that is really all you need to know. That's all you need to hear. Jesus is love. Jesus is Savior. Jesus is healer. Jesus is deliverer. Jesus is provider. Jesus is protector. Jesus makes us whole in every area of our lives. Jesus is all you and I will ever need. We can indeed rest in the love of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As we sing at this time of the year especially, joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her king. May 2018 be a year of joy of the Lord in your heart all year long. May you have the joy of the Lord just surging in you and be blessed with the fullness and the grace of our Lord. May you and your family experience Jesus Christ in a way personally that you've never experienced him before. May you experience dreams and visions coming to pass 
in this coming year beyond anything you can ask, think, pray, or dream. May you see the goodness of the Lord because of the Son of His love, Jesus Christ, and because He came and He has manifested Himself in our lives. Today, Sea Life Ministries, my family and I, wish you a Merry Christmas and a prosperous New Year. God bless you, each and every one.